Hi everyone and welcome to my second review video featuring classic Rolls-Royce model kits from the 1970s and 80s. You may have noticed I didn't say unboxing because I can't unbox this one on account of what I have just finished building it. I finished it a couple of weeks ago, very pleased with the way it turned out. But let me tell you about the kit. So it's a Revell 1934 Phantom II Continental Sedanka Coupe with gurney nutting coachwork. That's quite a mouthful. And it's 116 scale, which is large. So it's over 13 and a half inches in length, which is just under 35 centimeters, if my math is any good. And it's impressive. It really is. Um, this model I've had for 15 years waiting to be built. I cannot remember where I bought it. I really can't. And I can't remember what I paid for it, but it doesn't matter. As a teenager, though, I actually built this one in around 1979, 1980. And, you know, it got lost in transit. When you move house, bits fall off. And eventually you're just left with a box of little bits and you end up binning it, sadly. So I no longer have my childhood version of this kit. I do have one, just one surviving photograph of it in which I had painted it in white and beige, almost like the version on the box, but not quite. Um, looking back, I'm not crazy about that color scheme. So when it came to choosing a color scheme for this kit, I really was in three minds because I had three possible color schemes. I had a metallic blue and a very bright yellow and the color you see. So I reached out to enthusiasts on Facebook and they all without hesitation said maroon. So thanks guys for your inspiration and advice. I opted for maroon and this is the result. And I hope you are as pleased with it <laughs> as I am. So this kit is a mid 80s to late 80s release. And how do I know that? Well, I don't know for sure, but I do suspect that it is a later release because when the molds and dyes uh, that produce these models bang out thousands of them over a period of a decade, they get very tired, they get worn, and they start producing less than satisfactory moldings. And with this kit, I had quite a number of issues with some parts that had a tremendous amount of flesh. Some parts were misaligned in the molding. And then I also had some issues with the chrome work, which was less than desirable. Unfortunately, the radiator grill, which I think is the focal point of the exterior of the car, um, was shocking, shockingly chromed. It's going to need stripping and re-chroming, which I will do down the line. But you're probably wondering then where I got this grill on the car, which is absolutely pristine. Well, I will say that I found last week online and locally an unbuilt 1978 version of this kit and I was delighted to grab it. It arrived today and I quickly uh, pillaged and plundered the box for the radiator grill which is absolutely mint and I put it on this model so that I can make the video. And down the line, I will fix the other grill and put it back into the box. So I've got another kit waiting in the wings to be built. It's a really fun kit to build. I've put it on a rotating base, my lazy Susan, out of the kitchen so that you can look at it from every angle. There is the rather impressive front of the vehicle. You can see how nice the chrome work is. I tinted the fog lamps. I wasn't sure whether I should. And then I came across a picture online and the modeler had done it and it looked kind of cool. So I did it and I'm happy with the result. I also painted the indicators and it's got lovely rear view mirrors. And then just for fun, I added flag staffs and union jacks, not union jacks, union flags. I do beg your pardon. I should know better being English myself. And that's just to accentuate the Britishness of the prototype. So that was just a fun add-on. The chrome work is lovely. The front bumper and then these chrome strips on the running board. Each one had to be individually applied. So had fun doing that. 
the chrome trim on the roof and then the beautiful chrome on the wheel hubs you can see the Rolls-Royce monogram is very crisp and clear and then here at the back you can see the boot with its luggage rack also chromed and then the two-tone wheel cover the number plates and the tail lights and the little window in the roof now talking about the roof it's a two position roof so it's the Sedanka Deville configuration so this part of the roof can be removed in fact it rolls up and it's secured with leather straps and then it opens up the front compartment of the car the rear part of the roof does not fold down because there's actually nowhere in the coachwork for it to disappear into. So this part of the roof is fixed. If I just take that away, you can see. And then it comes with a separate little, there it is, that's the rolled up. There it is, rolled up with leather straps. I'll, I'll fix it later for you to see. In fact, I'll do it right now. And there you can see it in the, the open roof configuration. Very, very attractive. So I have got all the options. I have not glued the roof down and obviously I have not glued those two roof parts in place because I want to be able to display the car in the two various uh, two configurations. And then if I just remove the bonnet, you can see the engine. Very nicely detailed. At this scale, it would need to be. And so it's quite, quite presentable. I've painted a lot of the parts that were just black and I added some chrome detail, not chrome, I beg your pardon, copper detail. I used some copper wire and some copper paint. And the top of the engine also has the Rolls-Royce monogram, just like the real thing. A massive engine, 7.2 litre capacity. It's a pretty monstrous. So the engine detail is lovely. It's, it's, it's good to see under the bonnet. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the roof off and bring the car a bit closer so that you can see the interior and what I've done to that. So I've removed one of the doors and the, the entire roof so that you can see the interior. I had a lot of fun doing this. What I did was, I painted the burr walnut wood trim using oil colors and just sort of blended and mixed them. I added some liquid to speed up the drying process because I didn't feel like waiting a fortnight for oil paint to dry. And the liquid had the, the oils dry in just a couple of days. So that was really good. And then you can see I printed some carpets. Just found little carpet images online, printed them, but I added the Rolls-Royce monogram. I'm going to just zoom in so that you can see. There we go. First time I'm doing this sort of thing. So they've got the Rolls-Royce monogram. I hope you can see that and it's not out of focus. I also did the bird trim on the fascia and added the instruments. And that turned out really rather well. I'm going to do a separate video on, on how I do that process. And then I opted for the Bakelite traditional Rolls-Royce steering wheel. I have seen wooden versions of the steering wheel. But I thought there was enough um, lovely wood in the car. And then here's another feature. I'm going to just pause while I reposition the camera so that you can see what I added to the front seats. So I added two picnic tables. I scratch built them. Saw the idea online and copied it to a degree because the version online, the modeler had actually hinged the picnic tables in an open position. And then you had the little cubicles and he had even put interior lighting which illuminated them which was really cool but I, I didn't feel like going that far. I suppose with that lighting you could then read a newspaper uh, or a book but anyway it was enough work just doing scratch building these two little tables with the burr walnut finish and the little chrome handles for opening them and then I did do the hinges in chrome underneath which you can't see, but you can get a better view of the carpets as well. So that's the interior of the car. I'll just turn it for you so you can sort of see 
It's beautifully finished inside. The decals give you the accurate instruments for the dashboard. And it's disappeared from view. There we go. And it's got very nice seats. Quite sumptuous. I can just feel myself sinking into those seats. Now there, unfortunately, you can see the gap, the very nasty gap in the door. Unfortunately, I didn't do a dry run before I started assembling and painting the kit. And it was only after I painted everything and it came to fitting the door that I noticed that awful gap where it just doesn't line up at the hinges. Um, I'm not terribly fussed about it because I've got another kit that I'm going to get right. I will fix it down the line. I just haven't had time to. But overall, if I hadn't pointed it out, maybe you wouldn't have seen it. Overall, I'm very happy with, with how the car turned out. And there you have it. Ravel's superb kit. And I'm pleased that I finished it at last after many, many years. And I look forward to building the next one. And I will probably finish it off in the color scheme that is represented on the box. Um, the classic tan over cream. Uh, I'm not sure what the colors are called, but I will source them and probably do it in that paint scheme. So until then, I won't do an unboxing, but until then, look out for the next video, which is going to feature a really unusual Rolls Royce. And until then, cheers for now. Bye. And if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. Bye for now.